But Moses said it again. I, I said, let my people go. I said, no, can't do it. Nothing doing. How many times you said, let my money go? Let my children go. Let the city go. Let the Ozarks go. And Pharaoh sits there on his throne, mocking just like Goliath, just like the people with Samson, just like the devil with Jesus on the mountain. He says, mm, not happening. So Moses, through the Spirit of God, sends forth plagues of frogs, locusts, the rivers turn to blood. You don't think I understood you, but I said, let my people go. Pharaoh says, send the frogs. I'm not letting anything of yours go. So I'm trying to tell you guys where you are today. And so Moses, he goes back with God and says, what do I do? Seven times curses come upon them. Seven times it demands, let him go. Pharaoh says, absolutely not. They're his workforce to build his empire. Of course he's not going to want to let him go. So Moses says, all right. Like David said, all right with his rock. You're forcing my hand here. God said, go before him again. And tell him, let my people go. There's an anointing to deliver upon you. And when you have a deliverer's anointing, when you have a conqueror's anointing, you're not dissuaded and you're not discouraged no matter what the enemy tells you when you get back in the ring. If God said, let him go, you're going to let him go. You're going to let my family go. You're going to let Branson and Hollister go. You're going to let the money and whatever are stored up and held up go. You're going to let it go. What did you not understand about the deliverer's anointing? I proclaim to you, let it go, and you're going to let it go. And so, Pharaoh said, nope, not doing. Moses said, all right. Then. God's going to have to go one more round with you. This time your baby's going to die, and you're going to let him go. See, God always stays in there just a little bit longer than the devil does. So what happened? Pharaoh's kid dies, but he lets him go. If you get the fortitude this morning, mighty men and mighty women, you realize who you are and why you were sent in this day. No matter what the enemy speaks back to you, you can speak it back one more time. You don't understand what I said. I said, let the money go. You don't understand what I said, let the meth addicts in the city go and so he says back up and you say no see just like we started last Sunday it comes back to you staying in there on the word of God just one more round one more time because I know here there's Esther's there's David's people who wouldn't dare quit even when the king King Adaxerxes, whatever type of name that is, of Persia, says to Esther, I'm going to kill all your people. I have to kill all your people. They told me to kill all of the Israelites. And Uncle Mordecai says to Esther, you've got to go to him. And you've got to fight one more round. You've got to play one more time. She just said, well, don't you know how mighty the armies of Persia are? Don't you know they can destroy me and all of you? No, she sucked it up. She says, King, oh great King, spare ye my people. She could have been killed for even talking to the king without his permission. Well, that was her husband. No, you guys didn't understand Babylon and Persia. A woman did not talk out of her turn in the king's courts. But she walked right up through the middle of the legislators and the governors and said, let them go. Spare them. I don't know Esther no I said God wants you to let him go one more round if you don't become weary and well doing you will reap if you do not faint if you do not go to the spa and say oh I just got too weak and I couldn't do it anymore no God says get back in the ring children of God with the word on your lips with the sword of the spirit in your hand with your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace 
Our peace is not walking through the field of daisies. Feet is the feet of gospel of feet of peace. I can't even talk anymore. Is nothing missing, nothing broken. Feet that are shod with the vibration of of peace wherever they walk. Things have to be whole. Things have to be repaired. There's peace in my feet. These are devil kicking heels. There's an old saying that says, what would you do if you knew that you could not fail? You'd go back in the ring and fight again. You wouldn't let discouragement be the Lord's voice in your head. It says it's not going to happen. That Brother Jim might be blessed and he might have $5 billion, but not you. No. If you knew that you would not fail, you get back in there and you speak to that problem. You speak to that mountain again. You speak to that enemy again. And you tell it to bow instead of making you bow. Norman Vincent Peale was an author and he said this phrase I want you to take this with you today it is always too soon to quit well when is the time to quit it is always too soon to quit it is always too soon to stop expecting it is always too soon well what if I believe for two more weeks it's still too soon to quit what if 40,000 30 die and everybody falls out of the church it's still too soon to quit because any person who was deemed to be a great person of great faith fought a great fight. There's not one person in this Bible that they said this person was a person of great faith that didn't fight the great fight. Brother Kenneth Hagen, we're talking Thursday, had an incurable heart condition. He was not called a great man of faith and power before that. It wasn't until he stood and he conquered that they said that man's got great faith. You have to stand and you have to conquer. To every man has dealt the measure of faith. You understand that. But there's an increase of your measure if you keep standing. I want to be known as for God as a woman of great faith. But you know how that comes by being a woman who stood in great battles and didn't run back and scamper to the day spa and say, Pastor Jim, hide me. Hide me. The devil don't find no sissies here. Amen. So every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, right now, I'm going to pray for you. Father, I thank you that you said Thursday night that a last day strength was coming upon these men and women to fight last day battles with dignity, with authority, with dominion. Father, to rule and to reign in this earth over every principality, over every power. Right now, Father, we receive that strength like Samson. To get in there and if someone would just untie our hands and put us up against a pillar. Father, we know we're in a position to push over strongholds and principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness. We know, Father, we sense it right now that if someone would just untie our hands. And Lord, we even find that our hands aren't even tied. That strength is returning to the body right now. To go back out onto that battlefield when everybody else is shying away. Stepping over what has already been spoiled. standing say today we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living so right now devil will speak to you and say lose their money and you let it go you lose the babies and you let them go you lose this city and you let it go you lose this nation and the White House and you let it go if you say no we'll go another round and we shall see we shall see we shall see the word of the Lord performed 
even this day. For the anointing of the deliverer and the conqueror is here. Sharon Doherty and I see her kind of like Samson her husband died they gouged Samson's eyes out it doesn't matter the show must go on blind or not blind husband or no husband I'm going back in the ring see the devil can see if he can't if he can't tear you down here and he can't tear you down there then you're not to be messed with because there's other people who has blinded and there are other people that well, he's killed their husband and they quit so he's going to try it on other people he says no not here we are the more than conqueror type blind husband no husband kid no kid i still say loose him and let him go they're scare tactics do you understand that that's all they are is scare tactics but perfect love casts out fear so I'm just crazy enough to believe that the love of God sustained me in the middle of the back that's why I'm back that's who you are brother Jim go on and come on and take this and I talk about this all day you see I've gone three services already it might be four Say, I will go another round. Say it like you believe it. I will go another round. See, that's the thing that the devil don't want to hear out of your mouth. I will go another round. One more is all it takes. It's all it took for Jesus. It's all it will take for you. Just one step further than he was willing to go. The world is actually waiting to see if you go one step further. You actually believe what you've been speaking. They're looking at your faith. How far out, David, are you gonna run into that, that battlefield? As far as it takes to get the harvest. You can do it. Brother Jim. Hallelujah. 